When we look at somebody's face, the first thing we look at usually is the eyes. And therefore, when you draw them, they are often the most important feature. And we draw them usually much bigger than they really are. It can be more flattering. In this picture, these eyes are a little bit too big. This is why Disney characters often have very large eyes to make them more appealing, whereas the villains will have very narrow eyes because when we're suspicious or angry, we often narrow our eyes. So we associate that with maybe a more suspicious or angry character. One way of doing this is to search for a large, clear picture of an eye on Google and use that to copy from. This is much easier if you're looking at an eye while you do this. So either look in the mirror or look at a picture of an eye. Drawing eyes, you need to consider the shape of an eye. If you have a look in the mirror, you should see that you've got a kind of a lemon shape. So you've got a tear duct, then you have a curve at the top. It's kind of like an almond or a lemon shape. But the bottom one is flatter curve. The bottom lid is slightly flatter. So this one's much more curved, this one is flatter. Again, this is a generic eye. I'm doing a Caucasian generic eye. And this bottom lid, you can usually see the inside of it um, when you're looking face on at somebody. So you could draw that in, that line. Quite often it catches the light too, so it's useful to have it. If you were then going to draw any eyelashes, it would come off that outer lid. The eyelashes don't come from in the eye, they come off the outer lid. Have a very careful look at your, your own eyelashes and see where they come from. At this stage, you can already put in an eyelid. So you can have some idea of the size of your eyeball. Your eyeball is gonna sit within this eye. It's this big round shape in the eye socket. This bit here, this is your tear duct. It tends to catch the light. So you often can shade in dark sections. If you want, you could get a picture up off the internet or have a look at your own eye when you're doing this. I'm just doing it from memory because I've drawn quite a lot of eyes. To do your iris, this central part of your eye, if you look straight on, if you have a look in the mirror, you usually find that the bottom of the iris, certainly in an adult, in a child's eye, the iris tends to take up more space because the eyeball is is still quite large, but the eye socket may be slightly smaller, so the iris seems bigger. But you do need to get it very round, so you need to work on your circle skills. You want to make sure that the actual circle would be touching that top lid and just brushing that bottom lid. And then the pupil section in the middle, you're going to see more of the bottom of your iris than the top because this bit's hidden by the lid, so imagine that that's the top of your eyes all the way up there. Make sure that this is a bit higher. This you can draw quite solidly, because that is one area that is very dark. Probably better to wait till you know you've got it in the right place first, before you make it dark. I'm gonna leave it like it's catching a bit of light, because eyes tend to look more flattering when they've got a bit of shine in them. This outer edge can go a bit darker, and just very quickly, you could draw in the muscles. You can't always see these lines in your eye. Obviously, if you're drawing it in great detail and you want a perfect eye, you'd have to look really carefully. Your iris tends to be a little bit darker underneath the lid because there's more of a shadow. This line does tend to be darker. So this is where you've got your eyelashes coming off. So when you start your eyelashes, you can start them from about here and they always flicking up. Again, have a look at your own eyelashes. They come from this line, but they can go under it and over and they're always going away. If you do them quite heavy, they tend to look more female, more feminine. And if you do them quite light, it tends to look more masculine. And they can flick right over the edge. They tend to come over this edge here, flick up and round. 
and you can put a bit of shade in the side to create a curve. Underneath this edge would be a bit darker. I'm now holding my pencil at the end and using the side of the pencil to create a softer edge rather than lots of lines. And at this stage you can just keep going however much you want to get the detail in. And you can shade this bit too, but it really depends on the lighting. And quite often you have a bit of a bag under the eye. But tend to leave that white space around this area. There's usually a white around your tear duct. Good luck and have fun.